Welcome back to Rise Entertainment 360. Now, school is back in session on BT with their hit series, The Quad, which is now in season two. And you can catch all the excitement every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. That's right. Here to break down all the drama on the show is actor Jake Allen. Welcome to Rise 360. Welcome. Yes. Thank you for having How me. How are you, Jake? I'm doing well. Happy to be here in New York. Wow, fantastic. Now, you have to tell us all about your character, Bojan Folsom, yes. on The Quad. Yes. yes. Bo, Bo John is a, uh, a fish out of water here at this HBCU, obviously. Uh, he is a small town Texas kid, and uh, he was a big high school football recruit. Right. And he lost all of his big, you know, uh, SEC type big football scholarships because he got in this big fight with his high school coach. Uh -oh. And uh, Eva Fletcher, president of uh, Georgia A&M University, played by the wonderful Anika Noni Rose, yes. kind of takes a chance on this kid to, to see if he can revamp this struggling football program. Oh, and wow. uh, so. And does he? Uh, he's working on <laughs> it. Right, right, he's doing his best, I can promise you that. But. Uh, as many uh, freshmen in college, it's uh, it's not a perfect road. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, here in the U.S., it's usually the shoe on the other foot where a lot of the African American students go to all white colleges. But mm -hmm. you're at an HBCU, which means historically black predominantly college white. and university. Yes. I don't know yeah, that there are any all white colleges. Okay. Right. Predominantly <laughs> white college, you're right. Right. But this time, your character is going to a predominantly black school. So, mm -hmm. how was that experience for you it's being been, in this? It's been amazingly type of educational because mm -hmm. of that. There aren't that many stories like this. Yes. And so for me, I, I barely knew what HBCUs were before the, when I, when I first read the pilot on the title page, it had some statistics about HBCUs. Mm. And I was like, hold on, before <laughs> page one, I had to go Google right. something, you know what I mean, to figure out what exactly all these HBCUs were and mm. how a bunch of them were actually in Atlanta where we shoot and things like that. So for me, uh, I've just been learning alongside with Bo, you know, which is really cool for me. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, you mentioned having to Google some of these terms and some yeah. of these HBCUs. What other sort of research do you have to undergo to get you ready for this role? You know, at the beginning, I didn't do that much because my character was this small town kid right. that had been in this little <laughs> tiny Texas football bubble, Texas. you know what I mean? <laughs> Texas. You know, because he was that kid, I really didn't do, I didn't want to do much research. Mm. Um, but then with season two, which is the second semester, and he's been at school for a while, I tried to do the opposite and visit other HBCUs in Atlanta and around Georgia and things like that. Mm. And uh, my roommate on the show, this guy here, Miles Stroder, mm -hmm. he actually went to Morehouse. Mm. So I like to say he's kind of my HBCU guru. Uh, right, right, he knows uh, all about yeah, that experience. Exactly. Well, at least you know about the football experience, because yes. is it true you got a full ride to college yourself on a football scholarship? I played, yeah, I played football at, uh, at Cornell University. Wow. Oh, okay, not to are? brag or anything. No. I went to Cornell University <laughs> and I also got a scholarship. Right. <laughs> Four year, all right. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. So is this like reliving your college days and be back uh, on the field? It's uh, a little different. <laughs> but now, you know what the beautiful thing is? Uh, One, I get paid. Oh, which hey. is nice. So I'm technically like I'm a professional football player. Oh, like, true. I'm just saying, I like, like let's just say. say. Yeah. And I don't have to take the vicious hits because <laughs> I get a stunt double when we do some of the bigger stuff. That's so perfect. So my mom is like, you should have been, you never should have played football. You should have just been acting your whole life. Uh, <laughs> All right, mom. Yeah, That's so good. she's behind it for sure. I awesome. love that. <laughs> yeah. What has this acting journey been like for you? For someone who, mm. whose mother is clearly incredibly proud of, mm. of the path that he's chosen to take, how have you found it? It's been really interesting because I actually found acting kind of via football. When football was coming to an end for me at the end of college, I knew I was going to have a big void in my life mm -hmm. with this. Uh, entertainment part, the, the shining part that I love about football, playing in front of a crowd and all that stuff, um, and the competitive part as well, to be yeah. honest. And uh, when I started acting, I started to realize I got the same feeling right before doing a scene that I got right before a game. Mm -hmm. And so once I really started to feel that and feel the same type of butterflies and excitement, mm -hmm. I knew that acting was for me. Oh, so sure. wow. Well, you've been yeah. making sort of like home movies with your brother, even growing oh, yeah, up, yeah. your brother Connor, and you're still working together now. What was yeah. that like working with him then and working with him now? It, it was cool. I was the, uh, when I was a kid, I was basically the ultimate stunt man. <laughs> I, I thought it was cool. I thought he was giving me like a cool job, like uh -huh. to be the stunt guy in his movies. But then I no. realized that I just was the guy that he wanted to push out of a tree <laughs> or like stab with fake knives. And this and is stuff. your older like, brother. My older brother. Yeah. yeah. Older kids. So he yeah. tricked me, you know, right, right. he's still tricking me to this day. But uh, 
It was definitely a little more exciting to to make. I made a movie with him last year called Overexposed, mm -hmm. and uh, to work with him on that level was was pretty exciting. And the movie was. It was a small town thriller set in Oklahoma. Mm. So the difference between shooting this very small rural movie in Oklahoma mm -hmm. and The Quad, which is this you know this great B, big BET show. We have huge football numbers, huge band numbers. In the mm -hmm. episode tonight, there's a big band competition, Ooh. you know, these huge setups. And so to, to have both in my life is really cool. Mm -hmm. I can imagine. Yeah. So would you say you have your brother to thank for your, your career as an actor now? Oh. I think, I think, for sure. Yeah. I mean, when I first started acting, it was going on to his sets and just watching mm. and getting inspired and seeing what I wanted to do within yeah. the industry. I knew I liked movies, I liked TV, all that, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to be a writer mm -hmm. or maybe I wanted to follow, follow in his footsteps and be a director. And then, but once I really started to go on his sets and things like that, and get behind the, the whole process of it. You're all. like, yeah, I want to be knew. famous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. But you are How can I get into these exactly. situations with cool pictures of myself in the background, <laughs> you know? But you are doing more writing. You did Forsaken. You yes, just did that. You I am a writer that. as well. Yeah. So you're getting some more dabbling in behind yeah, the scenes. Yeah. You think you're going to do any directing as well? We'll see. We'll see. Ooh. I can barely master my own parts. So <laughs> I, I don't know if I can handle everybody else's character, too. Right, that's a lot. Yeah. So on the subject of being a writer and director, who would you say your dream collaboration is? Ooh. I I love um, probably uh, Taylor Sheridan and or Ryan Coogler. Both oh, of those guys. Yeah, when Fruitvale Station moment. came right. out. Yeah, but but even before with, with Fruitvale Station, I, when I saw that movie. See, this is how oh you God. know that he yeah. knows his stuff. Because I'm like, Fruit, what? what? Wow! Yeah. Yeah. No, I, oh, I mean, I'm we need to leave. Don't leave. Right, 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 no, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> it was an indie hit, an underground. Yeah. Not as many people saw it, but it got yeah. rave reviews, mm -hmm. critically yeah. acclaimed, and mm -hmm. you know that one of the things is you know savaged his relationship with Michael B. Jordan, and them doing all their projects mm -hmm. yeah. together. Because I think they that. made a, a movie kind of recently that did all really? right. Really? Oh, what was I that called? I can't remember the name. Could could it, it, was it was it the one that was set in what 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 Wakanda? Forever. Go ahead, get in, Jake. Yeah, Wakanda, forever. Okay, okay Jake, so what's next for you? Uh, I mean, to be honest, right now I'm enjoying watching the show come out every Tuesday night with yeah. everyone. Um, Are you involved in the live a, tweeting and oh, everything? Oh, always. I love, yeah. I love the response that we get, um, especially with all the social issues that we yeah. bring up. Yes. Where it's, it's fun when you get the fun responses mm -hmm. and things like that and the fun uh, gifts and the memes and all that mm -hmm. stuff. But I think even more so when someone says, like, you know, the the storyline about sexual assault in season yeah. one that we went into when people were really affected by that. Yeah. Like seeing that on Twitter is a whole it's a whole nother deal. Yeah, because you know, a lot amazing. of people just think it's supposed to be surface, it's football, it's college, mm. but when you guys are dealing with, you know, rape on a college campus mm -hmm. and really issues that are going on in society today, yeah. you know, how do you deal with those things and how do you address them on social yeah, media? Yeah, I mean I think just trying to be at least with, within the show it's trying to be as truthful as possible. And that's why mm. some of the stuff is surface, because that's college. Yeah. In college, you're going to parties, you're hooking up, you're mm -hmm. getting into trouble, you're figuring life out and things like that, and you're having fun. But at the same time, at college right now, they're, like sexual misconduct is mm -hmm. an absolute epidemic, you know yeah. what I mean? You recently uh, just had the, I can't remember his name, but the, the guy who was sent to jail whilst in college for raping a girl, oh. and recently the girl has just come out to say that it was all a lie, it was all fictitious, really? yeah, you know? I mean, so yeah. these are we, real life issues. And yeah, in, in the first season they definitely tried to yeah. to honor those those type of things yeah. by creating a storyline that was a bit of a who, who did it mm -hmm. type, you know. Who is always at fault? Is every you know? Is the man always at fault? Is this yeah. or that? You know. But it was done um, so tastefully and so respectfully. Writers. Yeah, you guys yeah. did a great job. And I want to end on a happy note. So yeah, yeah. A little <laughs> more light. Uh, since you learned a lot while on the show, talk to us about some of the things you learned about urban or black culture while mm. you've been there. So maybe slang words. You are or, you are <laughs> trying to make this not for this one. No, 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 come on. You got to learn some top, fun stuff. Or even some dances, two, something. Probably the top two term terms I learned were uh, bet. Bet? You yeah, know that's bet. bet. That's yeah, didn't know bet. what that meant. Bet, bet man. Yeah. And uh, now it's really just caught on, period. But yeah. when we were first doing the... Please don't when we were first doing, no. <laughs> <laughs> When we were first doing the pilot, though, fire. Oh, that's, like, oh, that's, that's fire. fire. That's fire. Yeah. When, when we were first doing the pilot, that was not really a big You were like, term. where's the fire? And I was like, <laughs> what's going <"Wait>, on? <laughs> I'm fired? I'm off the show. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I thought I was getting fired every day. But now you say it with such conviction. Say it. Like, go on, Jake. Go yeah. on. I mean, that's fire. That's, that's fire. fire. That's fire. You got fire. You got fire. Yeah. 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 Ye
this. <laughs> All right, well, you continue to be fire on All the right. show. You guys, make sure you check it out tonight on BET and every Tuesday on BET, 10 p.m. Yep. It is an amazing show. It's fire. And please tell Nico the rules. I said hello. I'll put in the word. I'll put in the word. Wow, Shannon schmoozing. <laughs> Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back with more Rise Entertainment 360. <laughs> All right. Yeah.